Hey guys, this is Game of Cal. Welcome to set 20 of our Pokemon TCT draft. Hard to think we're here already, and it's rotation season once again. We're in Hidden Legends. This is the last uh, of the 2004 World Championship sets. We now have our eight, basically, once we've drafted this one. And it's pretty cool. There's a lot of really nice stuff in here. There's uh, a few notable highlights. Uh, Bennett is really good. The uh, X Wild would be nice to get. Machamp is one that hasn't been pulled yet from the other two. Would be fantastic to see. Metagross is cool. Shiftery is very good. Wolverine is very good. We've seen these already from people. Gorbis is probably best deck in format uh, in hindsight. So I think this actually beats Magma as the best deck by far, so there is that. I mean, I personally like Blaziken more, but I can definitely see it. And yeah, there's just a bunch of really cool stuff, like Lantern is really cool. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, EXs down here. Some of them are okay, uh, particularly Metagross, Vileplume, maybe one of the more unexplored ones for this format, I don't know. Uh, Steven's Advice is the absolute game changer that we need here. Desert Ruins also helps a lot as well. So, a bunch of really cool stuff down here. Hopefully we get a ton of it. And there are some other things that are important with the rule changes and stuff as well. There's some promos here too, and a box top, but that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I think the most important thing is to actually get into our set pool here and see what we can get. So uh, yeah, let's just pull our stuff and uh, talk about it as we go. Uh, right off the gate, we don't get anything too special here. There's a Metacham and a uh, Metacham? It's not a Metacham, it's a Metang. It's in the rest slot, it's pretty bad. Uh, well, no, maybe it's okay, I don't know. The point is, Better Charm over here is probably the better card out of this. This would be a fantastic Wally target, but I guess spoilers for the uh, rule change and like stuff we've lost video. Uh, Wally is not as good now unless we dedicate to going second because we are not allowed to play a supporter card if we go first. So we can't Wally going first anymore, which is a bit of a shame. Going into the second pack we got here, because honestly there's not a lot else that's worth talking about there. There's a Vulpix with Ascension, there's both a regular Ninetales and a Ninetales EX in this set, and they're both kind of okay. Ascension lets you just evolve into one of them turn one, so the, this Vulpix could go into the Ninetales non-EX is pretty good. Um, Huntail... Huntail's a weird one. I think this could be decent later on. Uh, when we get a lot more Dark Pokemon in the Team Rocket set. Right now it's not particularly good, because it takes too many energy to do its Dark Splash, but there are ways that you could justify using this. Uh, the Team Magma and Team Aqua stuff, a lot of those are treated as Dark as well as their normal type, so maybe you could play something with that. It's a little, uh, just a little expensive right now. There's a Swalot over here that if Wally was a good trainer, a good supporter still, this would be very powerful because Amnesia is an insane attack. Imagine Wallying into this. You could still do it with Red Candy, mind you, but imagine going Wally into Amnesia on turn one and just stopping the opponent from playing their Dunsparce. It would be very nasty. Uh, here we have Desert Ruins. This is very strong, actually. Very, very good to see this. If I want to keep playing Magma for some reason, which I mean this set might facilitate, this is going to be one of the ways we do it. And any time between turns each player puts a damage counter on one of their EX Pokemon with at least 100 hit maximum HP. So this lets you soften up everything. It also puts damage counters on the board so that you can play the Pulverize and actually do a lot more with it. So very very powerful card we definitely want to see a few of those yo that's kind of cool reg icx okay so apart from just looking beautiful um the reggies are all interesting here this prevents any effects of attacks that aren't damage done to it which is kind of neat freeze lock for 60 for the two water colorless is a little hard for me to power up i'll be honest but if you flip heads the opponent can't attach an energy to the active pokemon next turn that's kind of neat, to be honest. We might be able to make use of that. Also, it's 90 HP, so it goes underneath Desert Ruins if we do decide to play that. A couple of somewhat interesting things to talk about here. We do have a Rhydon. This Rhydon I've seen popping up in some 2005 decks, for some reason. Um, 
I guess it's fine. This would be another really good Wally target. Again, maybe you've got to build for going second and just try and do that. Horn Drill, just a flat 20 for any energy is kind of good. Hyper Tail for 50, that's average for the energy cost, which is not typically going to be C play. But if the opponent's got any Poké Powers or Poké Bodies on, their, uh, on the thing you're attacking, it does 70 instead. That's pretty reasonable. It can do 70 to Groudon too, which is quite nice. So, yeah, with Strength Charms and stuff, I could see it. It's a pretty respectable uh, attack here. Next up, oh, there's a couple of fun ones here. Right, so, Ancient Tomb is pretty good. Any non-EX Pokemon or non-owner as well, so you can't use this with Team Magma, for example. Um, don't apply weakness. So this lets you avoid, say, Flygon would be a really good one here. Flygon would no longer take super effective damage from Rayquaza, which would be excellent. So, very cool card there. Um, Medicham is part of uh, LBS, I think, or LBM, I guess it would be. Uh, I believe it is uh, Lantern Medic uh, Bennett Medicham would be the, the thing. It's just a stage one deck that hits a lot of different weaknesses. Uh, Meditate is decent if you're doing a bunch of damage anyway. Chakra Points is a really good one here because this lets you punish the fact that this format is very big on high hand sizes. So very, very strong card for that. The cast forms are in here as well. There's a different one for each of the weather stuff here. They let you freely switch between them, even if there's a special condition on them, because it let it basically substitutes one cast form for the other, but all effects and cards that are attached to the cast form stay. So if you're paralyzed, you will still be paralyzed when you switch out, which is uh, interesting. You can It's a hard once per turn, so you can't just stall with this, which is fine. Um, this one is okay, like each of them rely on a different stadium card in order to do their effects. Uh, this one here is high pressure system, which to be fair would be nice, except it's got a 2 retreat cost for some reason, which is dumb. But uh, yeah, 40 plus burn, it's not really strong enough unfortunately. You could recover stadium cards with this, um, not really worth it to be honest. Uh, the Machoke is kind of interesting because Machamp is actually very good. Machoke Strikes Back is the same thing as what the original Machamp had. So it's a good Machoke is what I'm trying to say. Uh, here is our first, uh, our first hollow? No, apart from the EX I guess. Uh, yeah, our first hollow of the thing here. Heracross isn't very good unfortunately. If there's got any EXs in play you get two grass energies on it. Maybe you could use this in uh, Sceptile? If they have like a basic EX or something, you could get extra energy from your deck onto this thing and then transfer it away because this attack is not very good, to be honest. Um, the Celio was kind of interesting because Walrein is actually really good here too. Celio would be another excellent Wally target because it just spreads 10 to all of the opponent's Pokemon. This might be the best one actually because if you're going second anyway, gives the opponent a chance to use their... Uh, Dunsparce, right, and put a bunch of stuff down, and then you can just go Celio, spread 10 to all the stuff that just benched. Could actually be pretty good. This pack has got some excellent stuff to it. We see another Desert Ruins, which is really good. We see Jirachi here, and this Jirachi is in one of the decks, but it's nice to not have to take that deck. Make-A-Wish is pretty good. I've seen this played in even as late as like 2006 decks, when like Hidden Legends on is the thing. Uh, search your deck for a card that evolves on one of your Pokemon, put it on that Pokemon, then put a damage counter on the Jirachi. Not on the Pokemon you evolved, mind you, on the Jirachi. So you can cheat evolutions out with this. Excellent card to have. Might even be technically better than playing uh, Dunsparce in some situations. Mind Bend is also kind of decent if you can fuel it, but Psychic Metal is difficult to fuel, so don't expect that too much. Electrode, I think I've seen this teched in a couple of Electrode EX decks later on, but it isn't really super great. Mass Destruction deliberately doesn't work if it has any special energy attached to it so that you can't boost energy this card, and that probably kills the viability to be honest with you. Alright, next up, oh wow! Uh, interesting to see this as well. Regirock EX unfortunately has 100 HP so it is affected by the uh, Desert Ruins, which is a shame, but it does mitigate that by healing itself every time. 
Uh, it's got the same at ability as like Raindish on the Ludicolo and whatnot. And then it can do 80 damage for free energy, which is a lot, but it does do 30 to itself as well. So you've got to kind of mitigate that a little bit, but it's, it's powerful. Just how are we getting that energy on, right? ATM Ice, there's, uh, there's a set of ancient technical machines, I don't think I even mentioned the steel one, I think I might have pulled that already because it's garbage, maybe if we get another one we'll show it. Um, you attach these to a non-EX, non-owner evolution Pokemon, so pretty specific, but it gets its own attack like from the ancient technical machine, and the ice one discards all of the opponent's trainer cards in play, this would include their stadium card as well. If you do that, you have agility on your active for the next turn. So, pretty strong card, to be honest. Um, in the right situation. Very situational. We're probably not going to see it played. The rock one is the one that we actually want here. Um, cast form, the snow cloud one. This does status conditions for one energy, which I guess is kind of cute. But it needs magnetic storm in order to do its uh, bonus damage here, and it takes a lot of energy to do it too. 70 for 4 on a non EX basic is pretty good, but how are you getting this energy on it really? Magnetic storm is something that works with psychic and fighting types, so doesn't even benefit the cast form. I don't know, T definitely don't want to see a second one of it here. It's unfortunate because we no longer have the premium slot, so these rares that are very bad are just taking up all of our packs here. Alright, rounding out the first third, we have our first copy of Steven's Advice. I definitely need two of this. I want four of it because Sai didn't pull it, and I really want to be able to get it to him. This is the card I have been waiting for, and one of the reasons, I think, why I didn't like Magma so much. Draw a number of cards up to the number of the opponent's Pokemon in play, but you can't do this if you have, I believe, the Arata says 7 or more. So I'm pretty sure we are not allowed to play this if we have 7 in hand, including this one. Uh, so still extremely strong, this just reads draw 5 or 6 cards, and it's really dumb. Relicamp is another interesting one here, if it's your active, then it has the same power as the Gengar did, right? Where Dark Gengar forced the opponent to flip two coins, or well, each player, but like both of both just your opponent, really, because let's face it, this thing's not going to sleep. So it forces the opponent to wake up only if they flip two heads. Its attack can do that sleep for a coin toss, but ideally you want to have a way of getting the opponent to sleep otherwise, and then like the Hypno or something, and then switch to this card. And that way you can just stun them. I don't know. Uh, kind of worth noting this feel here as well, because it does actually have a double status on it as well, the same as uh, the uh, cast form does. So it's pretty cool. Alright, next third, let's see if we can get something that brings stuff together here. Another Metacharm is actually really good. Okay, um, Ninetales is worth noting. I mentioned this one before because of the Ascension Vulpix. This Ninetales is the same safeguard ability as the Wobbuffet. It doesn't do a ton of damage as a result, but this forces the opponent to use a non-EX in order to take it down, which is pretty good in my book. Island Cave is an interesting card because if you attach an energy to a uh, Reggie-type Pokemon, like Metal, Water, or uh, Fighting, you heal status conditions from it, which is very nice when status conditions like Paralysis from Sudden Flash are a right pain in the butt. And then we have Glalie over here too. Psy was kind of looking at this with uh, Swampert potentially, and I can see why. If the opponent has any special energy on their active, this takes 40 less damage from their attacks. That's kind of nuts. Uh, Heavy Blizzard is also fine, like we've we've eschewed the if tails do damage to your own bench at this point, so it's just a reasonable spread option, but that Ice Wall is crazy against some decks if they rely on special energy too much. Next up, uh, we've got a couple of cool cards here, we've got Blossom. This means I don't necessarily have to take that deck now, which is pretty good. Uh, Blossom was a uh, rather late introduction, but it was a tech into a ton of decks uh, that were playing Stage 2s anyway, because you use this with Red Candy as like a 1-0-1 line. You can only do one heal dance per turn, but you heal 20 damage from one of your Pokemon. Doesn't have to be active, doesn't have to be bench, you just heal that. It's incredible. Uh, 
Miracle Powder is fine. Solar Beam is fine. It can actually come up because it's good against a Magma matchup, for example. Uh, if you're hitting weakness, this attack is pretty solid. Oops. But for the most part, it's all about that power. Heal 20 from one of your dudes. Clay Doll is also worth noting. Psy pulled like three of this card. I could probably trade it to him and give him four, which would be funny. Um, if the uh, opponent's active is an evolution, or like any evolution really, uh, so long as this thing is active, they pay more energy to use their attacks. This might seem bad because Claydol pays more for its own attack as well, but it doesn't really matter too much because Muddy Eye only takes one energy anyway and benefits from having more basic energy on the Pokemon that they're attacking with. So this is honestly pretty cool. and. I don't know if I like it per se, but I do think it's worth noting. Uh, speaking of stuff that is worth noting, here's Lantern and Bennett actually. So we've got both parts of this deck that I was referring to before. Maybe we just trade for Bennett and make like LBM here. Could be fun. Um, Energy Grounding is a pretty fun attack uh, ability here. If uh, your if one of your Pokemon is knocked out, you can get a basic energy from that Pokemon and attach it to the Lantern. It only does 50 for its free, but you can discard the lightning energy to make it do 90 instead. So this is good for hitting lightning weakness, but it also just keeps your energy in play, which is pretty good. The Bennett is incredibly powerful, actually. Um, Shadow Steel is very, very good against special energy hungry decks, because for every special that's in their discard pile, which keep in mind magma energy and boost energy discard themselves after use, right? Um, for each one of those that the opponent has uh, in their discard pile, this is 10 plus 20 for a single energy. And then for two energy, you count the number of Pokemon that you have in your discard pile, put that many damage counters on the defending Pokemon, up to six total. 60 for two energy is really, really good. So definitely worth noting this card. It's a bit frail, but it also doesn't take very many energy. So neat. Okay, I guess I'll talk about the Steel ATM because we see it here. If the defending Pokemon is for two energy, if they have any uh, Poke Power Poke Bodies, you choose up to two basic energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon and attach it to the active so that they can do more stuff. I really have no idea what you're supposed to do with this one. If it was the other way round, it would probably be fine, but I don't get it. Hexploud is much more worth noting though. Uh, this card has four attacks, which is absurd. All four of them are situationally good. They're much better with boost energy, so we might not be able to take full advantage of it here, but uh, all are worth noting. One colorless, 10 spread to all of the opponent's Pokémon is really good. Two colorless, 30 damage to one of the opponent's Pokémon, still really good. Three colorless, 30 plus auto confusion, that's a little bit weak to be honest, but again, boost energy could do that in one go. And also, Confusion is annoying still, so definitely not terrible. And then 4 colorless 60 is a little bit overpriced, but again, Boost Energy can make that like a 2 attack, a 2 energy attack, and at that point it's pretty good. So definitely quite strong. Next up, we have Chime Echo over here. I thought this could be decent until realizing that, yeah, the opponent can't play a supporter card if they go first anymore, so this is probably it's probably like a one-off if you play, play it with like Dunsparce or something. It's not amazing, but it does let you search the opponent's discard pile for a supporter card and use that as the effect of this attack, which is kind of nice. So. I think there's a world for it, but this probably isn't that world, so unfortunately hard pass. A second Regice, that's very funny. Uh, I can't really do that much with this, I don't think, but it's still very pretty. Would have kind of liked the Registeel, actually, but that does require me to pull Metagross as well, which we haven't done yet. Here's Gorbis. Gorbis is really cool. Uh, probably strongest deck in the format, but it needs double rainbow energy, which we didn't really pull last time. Um, look out for it on Leo's end, though, because he did pull double rainbow, so definitely worth a note. Um, Mystic Water is just insane. 20 damage plus 10 more for every psychic energy in play. You can use this with double rainbow energy so that it just does uh, 30 because DRE reduces by 10. But if you put double rainbows and stuff on your bench Pokemon, then this just gets out of hand very quickly. 
use this with a whole bunch of stuff, including Gardevoir is probably the best one to, to think of initially, where you're just accelerating Psychics on your board and just getting a bunch of extra damage out of it. Very, very cool. Uh, here's Pinsir. Pinsir's not very good, unfortunately. Um, damage done to by basics is reduced by 30, which is pretty good, but this attack just doesn't do anything, so very, very hard pass for me. Here are a couple of cool cards. Milotic is a very interesting one. Um, if you evolve one of your uh, Feebas into this uh, from by you know using this from hand, you may fully heal every non-EX Pokemon in play, which is pretty intriguing to be honest. Uh, full heal on everything. It does include your opponents, but if you've been hitting them for enough damage where that doesn't matter, it's probably quite strong. Uh, Distorted Wave is also interesting. 80 for 4 is really good damage, but you do have to heal 30 before you uh, damage the opponent. But 80 is enough to KO most of a stage 1 Pokemon, so that's quite good. Life Herb is also very interesting in this format. Yes, it's very flippy, so probably risky to play to say the least, and I don't think very many decks will want to play it. But this is heal 60 from one of your non-EX Pokemon. That is ludicrous. Also heal status conditions if you heal the active, which might matter, so keep an eye on it. Maybe somebody's gonna play it. There's another interesting pack here. Uh, another Jirachi is really good. I might just play two of this, to be honest, because uh, you can use this to get Delcaddy out. Here's Warring. Now, Warring was another energy acceleration card I was very interested in seeing for this format. Pepper has like three of this, so I don't think we're going to get that lucky. But Crush Drawer is really cool. If you can know what the top card of your deck is, then uh, you just get to attach an extra energy to one of your Pokemon per turn. It's kind of ridiculous. Sheer Cold is also like not the worst attack ever. It's a little bit underpowered, but on a Pokemon with an uncommon weakness, this is not the worst. And stopping the opponent attacking next turn is pretty good. So definitely intriguing. Look at all these Desert Ruins over here. We have four of it now. That's, that's very good if I want to play Magma. We do need three of that. Uh, still looking for more Stevens though. Way too many Desert Ruins at this point. Looking for more Stevens. Uh, Masquerade would have been a good Wally target, except that, you know, Wally is not the greatest anymore. So, not sure if it's going to see any play because of that. Last third of the box here. We are. We do have Steven. Okay. Looking for a couple more for Sai at this point. Shiftery is an excellent card. Sai managed to pull four of this, which is insane. This is one of the decks I was hoping to get this round. Um, yeah, this card is dumb strong. Uh, you look at the opponent's hand for Dark and Colorless, so basically 40 damage on this thing. Look at the opponent's hand and uh, bottom deck and Pokemon that you find there is ridiculous. And also, Triple Colorless, keep in mind boost energy, uh, can power that up in one go. If you match hand sizes with the opponent, this does 80 damage. We are in a format that has Desert Shaman and Copycat. And Copycat is played a lot because Steven is exceptional, right? Hand sizes get rather big, but it's dead easy to match them. And this consistently doing 80, more if you put Darkness Energy on this thing, but it can also just do 80 for one energy. This card is absurd, and uh, we might get to see it, who knows. Um, here's Love Disc, I think it's the first time I've actually seen this, and I'm kind of wanting like one of this and one of the Corsola from this set. Um, you draw cards until you match the opponent's hand size for one colorless energy. The notable thing with this is that it's 60 HP instead of 50 like most of our other uh, starter Pokemon are, so this actually can matter quite a lot. Sweet Temptation is also somewhat interesting. Uh, forcing the opponent to bring in a uh, new Pokemon. You get to choose what actually comes in, so you force them to switch and do 10 damage to the new thing. It's fine. Um, Alright, next up. Uh, not really too great here, unfortunately. We do have plenty of this stuff already. Really do not want to see the Metang at this point, because uh, we don't have the Metagross. Here is our first ATM Rock, and this one is the most important one by far. 
If the opponent has any evolution Pokemon in play, remove the highest stage from each of those and put them back into the hand. This is Ormastar's pull down attack, but on an item that you can play onto any non EX evolution. The cool thing about this is that it rips apart rare candy setups. So, yeah, honestly, extremely worthwhile to, to pull that. Here's another Relicath, a sixth. Desert Ruins. Are you kidding me? I mean, Pepper didn't pull any, so I guess that's a thing, but like, really? That's uh, kind of ludicrous. Next up, uh, we have Magnetic Storm finally. Another Metacham too. Yo, are we just playing Metacham this round? I think so. Um, Magnetic Storm ignores resistance from Psychic and Fighting Pokemon. This actually pairs very well with the Metacham, so uh, I think you might play one. You probably just play Desert Ruins in that deck, but uh, could be very cool. Uh, definitely worth seeing. Okay, you know what? If we're going to get another EX, Wigglytuff is probably one of the cooler ones to get. I, I think this card's a little bit under the power level, to be honest. Uh, Pepper pulled one as well, so maybe we could make something of it. Do the wave returns, but this time it's still for free colorless. It does 30 instead of 10 as its base, but it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't matter, it's doing like 80 at most, which is respectable, but not too amazing. I'm not super sold on this card, to be honest. Here is another Electrode and another Lantern. This is pretty good, to be honest, but the Electrode maybe not so much, but everything else is fine. Moving on, yo, a second Binet. I think that's what we're doing. I think we're making LBM this round. That's actually really cool, though. Uh, Gotta, gotta take a look and see what I can find in terms of debt list for that. Another Milotic is also somewhat interesting. I don't remember seeing a Phoebus yet, and we've only got like a couple of packs left, but I might just not have paid enough attention for it. Here is the first of the Beldum I was hoping to get here, but unfortunately we haven't pulled Metagross, so I'm pretty sure this is off the table at this point. Magnetic Call is a very fun, uh, fun ability, just getting any metal basic Pokemon uh, from the deck to the bench is very neat, but we just haven't pulled Metagross, so unfortunate. Tropius is somewhat intriguing, like you can pseudo, like you can heal with this thing by moving energy from it to something else, but it's not really good enough for its cost. ED HP 1 Retreat is pretty nice though, just like doesn't do anything. And Dodrio is funny because it can retreat even when it's asleep or paralyzed, that's about the extent of it. Last two packs here, another Gorbis is pretty nice, though I think we've only seen one otherwise, so uh, still interesting. Last one, please be a Steven? No Steven. Oh, that is unfortunate, because Psy didn't pull any, and oh, heart goes out to him on this one. I really wanted to pull some, uh, because I really wanted to get him some. Let's go ahead and get the Sorter out here so we can actually group this up and see what we can do. I'm pretty happy with this draft overall. Like, I only pulled two Steven, but that's all that you really need. I pulled so many Desert Ruins, I'm going to be able to trade those for some pretty good stuff, I think. Um, six Desert Ruins is absolutely absurd, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe that actually would be the trade for the Groudon, because I was kind of, like, unfortunately we didn't get the the Groudon, like, trade done fully last week, and Stevens was going to be the main target for it, but maybe because I have Desert Ruins I could do that instead. Could be worth it. I don't need six Desert Ruins after all. Uh, so, spread out our stuff here. We get anything else that was in shape. We did get two of those. Plenty of the sphere, like five Celio too. So if there's any of those needed, could be a thing. Um, Shadow Crush is interesting as an attack. It's the uh, Kindle effect, right? But on Psychic is kind of awful, I guess. I don't know. Uh, could have been interesting. We didn't get Machamp, so that's unfortunate. Nobody got Machamp out of the three that drafted so far. Big shame on that one. Looking at the stuff we did get here though, full place out of Island Cave as well is very cool. Could definitely be some stuff for that. 
Um, like I say, in full playset Desert Ruins, two ATM steel, only one ATM rock. Most of the time this is only a one-off, so I think it's okay, but it is a shame not to have two of it. Just because I think there are going to be some decks that could play that. Two Jirachi is very cool. Uh, if we take a quick look over at the Fiend decks, actually, because I have them out here, if I take the top Fiend deck, because I already have a couple of Blossom, I could have a third copy of this Jirachi, and then maybe trade Pepper for his Metagross. And that could start to set me up. I didn't get Metagross EX either, but we'll go over that when we, we go over the stuff there. I don't think I need this one. Both decks have got two Stevens of Ice. Dark Celebi is a very bad card. I already have enough of the Blossom, so I don't need to play that. And since we didn't get Vile Plume, we don't need to worry about any Gloom shenanigans here. Uh, yeah, so going back in... I mean, I got four copies of the Rare Metang, which is one you get as a promo anyway, so go figure. Only one copy of this dude, so I would need to trade for the Beldums as well. Uh, we got one of this as a promo last set, actually, so it shouldn't be very hard at all to trade for that if we want to. I didn't get Corsola, which is interesting, because I did want one copy of that. Um... Two Bennett though, so I think if I can trade for that, it'd be really good. Maybe I can trade Walrein in that side. Uh, plenty of Huntail. That's the other thing that is in the deck, right? Uh, yeah, there's a Huntail in this deck too. So that could set us up for some fun deck plays later on. Yeah, I think we're going to take this one. I don't need the Metal Energy at this point. Nobody does. But, I mean, I get a third Huntail as well. Or third or fourth, right? And uh, we get potentially into the Metagross, we get Jirachi, so I can just start with that instead. Yeah, I think it's just much better for me than the bottom one. But then looking at the rest of the stuff we have here, the one Clay Doll, I can probably trade this to... Oh, I did get a couple, okay. Probably trade this to, to Sai and give him the full playset that way, because that would be an interesting deck to see. Uh, yeah, we did get two Phoebus. Keynote for this one, this Ascension, not that you want to use it anyway, but this Ascension is on a coin flip, just because they mistranslated it or something, I don't know. I only got two Clampo, so I think I definitely take the deck at the top so I can have a playset of that. Uh, interesting when you don't get a bunch of the commons, right? Two Glalie, I mean, fine, maybe we can trade, I don't know. Uh, three of the Medicham, though. Loads and loads of this Medicham is really good. Triple Lantern is nice as well. I'm not sure which Chinchow is actually better here. They both 50 HP like one retreat. This one snipes 10 on one energy, but this one snipes 20 basically, like 10 twice. But it does it for two. So I don't know, we'll have to see on that one. Full playset of the Rhydon is pretty decent if we ever do want to play that. Um, we didn't see the Crobat either. Lots of the Ninetales. I know... Um, Pepper pulled for e 9 tails EX, so he was kind of probably interested in trading for these as well. Um, yeah, just a quick look at some of the stuff we didn't get that would have been nice though. Uh, we did not get the Machamp. This one would have been the main thing here, because if there's any EXs in play from the opponent, then this does like 30 more, so 70 for 2. Uh, we didn't get the Metagross, but we can get that from the deck. This transfers Metal Energy to from Pench to Active. And its attack is fine as well. Could be pretty decent. Um, we did not get the Crobat, uh, which is, uh, again, not very many of these got pulled. Uh, we could have done with this for Gorbis, but that needs double rainbow energy. So I think we're fine on that front. And then mostly in the EX department, I was really hoping to see Metagross EX, and we just didn't get it. So that might put a bit of a dampener in trading for the Metagross plan here, but okay, I guess we could probably make do anyway. Um, yeah, because Metal Reversal is a really, really good attack. Uh, we just didn't get hold of. Extra Comet Punch is also pretty fun. Uh, yeah, no more extra Steven's Advice. Uh, I think we hit everything else here. I don't think we hit very many Life Herb, but this does get reprinted a few times, so we're probably okay on that one. We didn't see the Vile Plume. Matt's going to pull four of this just to spite everyone. But um, <laughs> I'm being pessimistic, but still. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Trainer Lock when it's active. So it doesn't block supporter cards at least, but still. Um, we didn't see the Registeel. This is something that uh, Psy got? 
So like maybe if I trade into Metagross I can trade in with this as well, just to, to have something to go that way. Otherwise, yeah, and the Ninetales that Pepper's got. Fire Blast is pretty strong, if nothing else, so we'll see. There's also like Groudon and Kyogre over here, which uh, technically block Rayquaza, but get resisted by it, so it's like, whatever, dude. I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, the Corsola. I really wanted to see this, and I didn't get it, so I think I might have to try and trade for one of these. Uh, for one energy, you draw until you have uh, up to... Well, it's not up to 10. You draw for every basic Pokemon your opponent has in play, and you have a limit of 10 cards with this. But it's on 70 HP, it works with high pressure system that we've got a bunch of, and it lets you draw a bunch of cards at the start of the game. It's really good, and I wanted one for a couple of my decks, so we will have to see. Anyway, this is a very intriguing draft, to say the least. I think we have the makings of some very good stuff here to, like, go as a supplemental with what we already have pulled. So, I'm happy with this, I think. Um, could have done with some of the other stuff here. Uh, would have been nice to have had more Shiftry. I don't know, I don't think I'm going to be able to get one off of Psy, but maybe we can try. Uh, would have been good to have picked up the Metagross, obviously. But, like, I think we have some really good stuff. I have, uh, yeah, Burnett, Medicham, and I guess this uh, Lantern up here is, is a deck that is instantly jumping out to me here. Milotic could also be pretty interesting. There's a few uh, few things that could probably run with that. Oh, I got two life herb. Okay, I guess we're okay there. Um, Magnetic Storm I didn't get a lot of, but we don't need that. Yeah, and a bunch of Jirachi too. So I think we can make something work out of this. So we're going to spend a couple of weeks, hopefully, in this format. I think we... Uh, we would like to do a more thorough exploration of this one, because I think it would be neat. Uh, hopefully we make some good stuff out of it. So yeah, um, stay tuned for discussion stuff about, you know, what the rule changes and stuff are, what we're going to lose in rotation, etc, etc. And uh, yeah, let's make something good happen. Till next time, take care everyone. <laughs>